Today on Public Eye News, Northern Michigan University Food Pantry is opening and the death toll continues to rise following the 7.3 earthquake that struck Iraq and Iran. Dylan Ranget will have a look at NMU's volleyball chances in the GLIAC Tournament quarterfinals, and Elijah Clordy will have details on the cool down in our weather forecast. I'm Mason Wallace. And I'm Caleb Rydell. Welcome to Public Eye News. The Northern Michigan University pa Food Pantry will be open for the first time from 4 to 7 p.m. Wednesday, November 15th in room 101B of Grease Hall. The university's Food Insecurity Committee oversees the pantry. Non-perishable foods and hygiene products from the pantry will be available to any NMU students, faculty, and staff in need. Its regular hours will be from 4 to 7 p.m. Tuesday and Wednesday and 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Saturdays. Its supplies are donation-based and, and the volunteers are staff the pantry. Donations will be dropped off during its regular hours. The city of Marquette has a new mayor, Tom Bo Baldini. Baldini was selected by the city commission during Monday's annual organizational meeting. Former mayor Dave Cambana was voted as mayor pro temp. Fred Stonehouse was also sworn in as the new member of the commission. The most controversial issue of the night, however, was how to fill the vacant seat left by newly elected state representative Sarah Cambenzi. The city's char charter requires either special election or appointment by the commission. As fall faded away, area road crews are gearing up for the snowy season. The Schoolcraft County predicts they will use five to 6,000 tons of salt to keep their 700 miles of roads safe this winter. The Schoolcraft County Road Foreman John Oysterhout said his crews are busy prepping for winter operations. Oysterhout also said, quote, people need to stay back a little from plow trucks and let the guys do their work, end quote. And the mascots of many area schools are facing challenges once again. The Braves, Eskimos, and Redmen could face elimination from newly introduced State Senate Bill 646. The bill would require the termination of all mascots that are race or ethnically based except under special circumstances. Senator Tom Casperson has seen this legislation before and said, quote, I don't see this going anywhere. There is too much support in our communities for the mascots. They're part of the community they're woven into, end quote. A Waters Meet woman is in the hospital after a serious crash on US-2 in Iron River Township Monday afternoon at 12.59 p.m. near the intersection of Gibbs City Road. The Ford Fusion driven by the woman, Waters Meet woman was headed west on US-2 when it was struck by a Ford F-250 driven by an Iron River man who was exiting his driveway. The jaws of life were needed to extract the woman from her vehicle. She was transported to Aspirus Iron River and then later airlifted to Wasa Aspirus for treatment of her injuries. Officials say alcohol is believed to be a factor in the cause of the crash. The driver was arrested and lodged on suspect of operating while intoxicated causing injury charges. AAA Michigan says the gas prices statewide have risen by about two cents per gallon in the past week. The Dearborn-based Auto Club says early Monday, the average price for the self-serve regular unleaded gasoline was about $2.74 per gallon. That's about 67 cents more than at the same point last year. Michigan's lowest average price was about $2.70 per gallon in the Lansing and East Lansing areas. The highest was about $2.78 per gallon in the Marquette area. It's the third consecutive week that Marquette area has had the highest reported average price. And after the break, we'll be back with your national and international news. Stay tuned. For 100 years, the national parks have been part of the nation's commitment to preserve rare and beautiful locations. I'm Thierry Fisher, music director of the Utah Symphony. Join me as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the National Park Service with the beauty and sanctuary of Utah's five magnificent national parks. Coming November 28th at 8 p.m. on Public TV 13. Welcome back. Twelve more Pennsylvania State University fraternity members were charged Monday in connection with the death of Pledge Tim Piazza. The charges come after prosecutors recovered video footage from a frat house security camera that members said had been deleted. There is now a total of 26 students accused of crimes ranging from providing alcohol to minors to involuntary manslaughter. The case has quickly become the largest hazing prosecution case in our nation's history. 
And the National Republican Senatorial Committee is now among those calling for Rory Moore to drop out of his race for a Senate seat in Alabama. Five women now accused the 56-year-old Republican of sexual misconduct decades ago, while Moore denies everything. We warn you, some of the allegations are graphic in nature. Wei Zha Zheng has the latest from Washington, D.C. U.S. Senate candidate Roy Moore remains defiant. This is absolutely false. Moore says he doesn't even know the latest woman to accuse him of sexual misconduct in the late 1970s. This race being just 28 days off, that this is a political maneuver and has nothing to do with reality. It's all about politics. Beverly Young Nelson was 16 years old when she says Moore offered her a ride home from her job as a waitress. Mr. Moore reached over and began groping me and putting his hands on my breasts. Instead of stopping, he began squeezing my neck, attempting to force my head onto his crotch. With allegations against Moore mounting, some of Capitol Hill's most influential lawmakers are calling for him to quit the Senate race. If he cares about the values and the people he claims to care about, then he should step aside. He should not be a United States Senator. I hope that he steps down immediately. If these uh, accusations are true, that there'd be no place for him in the Senate. If Moore stays in the race, some Republicans are considering a write-in campaign for Luther Strange, who lost the primary to Moore. Alabama voters go to the polls on December 12th. Weijia Jang at CBS News, Capitol Hill. A defiant Attorney General Jeff Sessions told Congress today that he never lied under, Russian, uh, under oath about Russian interference in the 2016 election and said sleep deprivation and the chaos of the Trump campaign clouded his recollections of Trump campaign contacts with Russia. He has, he has dogged since January by his evolving explanations about his own foreign contacts during the campaign and about how much he knew of the communications between Trump associates and Russian government and intermediaries. Sessions sought to explain away apparent contradictions in his public statements by portraying President Donald Trump's campaign as an exhausting operation and said he could not be, be expected to remember specific encounters from more than a year ago. The number of dead from Sunday's powerful earthquake in, on the Iran-Iraq border has now risen to more than 530. Iran has declared this a national day of mourning. Terry Akita is in London with the latest on recovery efforts in the hardest hit area of western Iran. Anguished villagers wept as more bodies were pulled from the rubble, two days after a 7.3 earthquake struck western Iran and eastern Iraq. Crews with heavy equipment continue to dig through piles of debris and collapsed buildings. But Iranian officials say it's highly unlikely they'll find any more survivors. It's now become a recovery effort. This man says, my brother got stuck under rubble, but when the rescue workers pulled him out after an hour, it was too late. And 70-year-old farmer Sufi al-Basil says he lost his son, daughter-in-law and grandchild in the quake. Thousands of people were hurt, but with hospitals in the area heavily damaged, many of the seriously injured were taken to medical facilities in Tehran. Tens of thousands of people are now without shelter. This video shows the devastation inside an apartment complex as people salvage whatever they can. Many of the newly homeless are sleeping in tents or out in the open, fearful of more tremors. 200 aftershocks have already rocked the region following the world's deadliest earthquake this year. Terry Okita, CBS News. On his way home from Asia, President Donald Trump announced the trip was tremendously successful. Trump stated nations across the globe have been notified that the U.S. will demand better trading conditions. Trump stated in a tweet, the United States has to be treated fairly and in a reciprocal fashion. He also said the massive trade deficits must go down quickly. And stay with us because right after the break we'll have your weather and sports. The God of Vengeance. Behold the true story of how a little Jewish play journeyed around the world, only to be shut down on Broadway in 1923. For obscenity. Now a powerful new play shows us what happened. Please let me explain. 
look for the Tony Award winning production of Indecent. Isn't it good, Ruth Geller? Isn't it good? On great performances. Friday night at 9 after Charlie Rose The Week on Public TV 13. Welcome back. I'm Elijah Clorty, and the time is approximately 10 after the hour. As we look at our enemy sky cam, we can see that the snow is melting off, but there will be more in the future. And our current conditions, it is cloudy with a temperature of 38 degrees with winds south at 11 miles an hour and pressure of 30.07 inches and steady. Looking into tonight, Expect some rain showers and a low of 36 degrees and winds south southwest at 10 miles an hour. And tomorrow we can expect more rain showers with a high of 41 degrees and winds out of the west at 16 miles an hour. Taking a look across the UP, it's pretty cloudy in the mid 40s, upper 30s, 41 over in the Sioux, 42 in Manistique, Escanaba at 42 and Menominee at 41. Taking a look across the western half of the UP, it is 35 in Iron Mountain, 37 in Ironwood. Up in the Keweenaw, Houghton winds at a 40 degree mark, and Marquette at 38 and cloudy. Taking a look at the next three days. Thursday, we can expect a high of 30 degrees, a low of 25 and cloudy. Friday, a high of 37, a low of 32, and expect some rains and some rain and snow. And Saturday, a high of 34, a low of 23 and cloudy. Well, we can't really look forward to much of winter, but we can look forward to volleyball, and NMU has a lot of that going on right now. You're absolutely right. Some tournament play going on right now. The Northern Michigan University volleyball team will take on Davenport University in the Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference Tournament quarterfinals tomorrow night at 7 p.m. After defeating number three seed Michigan Tech for the tiebreaker, the Wildcats are in the number two spot going into the tournament. Tickets can be purchased online at NMU ticket outlets and at the door. The Detroit Pistons with a surprising hot start at 10 and three and second in the Eastern Conference standings will travel to Milwaukee to take on the Bucks tomorrow night at eight. Both teams are on a bit of a win streak as the Pistons are sitting at five games in a row and the Bucks at three. Since acquiring Eric Bledsoe from Phoenix, the, Buc the Bucks seem to have found their guard of the future as he joins forces with superstar Giannis Antetokounmpo, among other young talent on the roster. Detroit will likely be led by their big three in Tobias Harris, Andre Drummond, and Avery Bradley with the explosive Reggie Jackson running the point. Detroit is sitting at first place in the central standings and Milwaukee trails them in second at a record of seven and six. Tonight at 7, college basketball's number one and number two seeds will go head to head in Chicago as the number two Michigan State Spartans will take on the top ranked Blue, Duke Blue Devils. MSU sophomore Miles Bridges said, We have been practicing all summer and fall. We want to show everyone what we're capable of. Duke is a great team and it's going to be a great game. End quote. The teams met in a 2015 Final Four game when Duke won with then freshman Grayson Allen making an impact off the bench. Duke won again last year at home in the ACC Big Ten Challenge with Allen scoring a game-high 24 points. Michigan State is 1-1 one one when involved in a game with the top two teams with the victory four years ago in the Champions Classic against number one Kentucky. Ultimately, Duke leads the series 11-2, winning their last six meetings. Well, that, well, I hear we have a pretty unique surfing story coming yes, up Yes, it's definitely one I wouldn't want, a situation I would want to be in. A beginning level surfer has already mastered a pro's move on the first try. On Monday, Charlie Fry punched a shark on the nose to escape the clench of its jaws. The attack off the Australian coast left Fry with superficial puncture wounds on his right shoulder and upper arm. Fry credits his escape to a YouTube video he watched months ago of Mick Fanning describing his escape from a great white shark in 2015. And that's all the time we have today on Public Eye News, but tune in again tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Produced in studios located in the Edgar L. Hardin Learning Resources Center by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television.